Today we're going to be talking about that white powder stuff that everyone keeps asking me about and how it's used for candle making. And no, I'm not talking about that white powder that can keep you up all night to get your candle orders done. I'm talking about UV inhibitor or ultraviolet inhibitor. That's today's topic, so let's dive right in. Hi, my name is Wade Thomas. I'm owner of Black Tie Barn Candle Company and this YouTube channel. If you are new here, this channel is dedicated to helping other candle makers with various parts of the process and teach them little tips and tricks, how to, and even part of the business aspects as well. So welcome back if you are a current subscriber. If you're not, please consider subscribing and let's dive right in. So as I talked about in the introduction, today we're gonna to be talking about UV inhibitor, which again stands for ultraviolet inhibitor. Now it is a little kind of white powdery substance that I have shown a lot of my videos that I add to my candle wax when I'm making my products, both, ca both candles and wax melts. And I've been getting a lot of questions from new candle makers of what this product is. Now you may already be familiar with it. And if you are familiar with it, that's great. And so some of this will just be a little bit of a recap for you, but I would encourage you to stick around for the remainder of this video because I'm gonna talk a little bit about when to use it and how to go about adding it to your candle line, um, whether you should use it on all your wax products, and maybe a few other notes about the material that you might not already know. Again, what is UV inhibitor? Well, I've got a little bag of it right here. Um, this is from Flaming Candle Company, but I, you can get it from most candle suppliers, uh, Candle Science, Lone Star, a lot of, most candle suppliers sell it. But again, it usually comes in a package like this. This is an eight ounce package. Now, before we get into the candle making process and why this is useful for candle making, um, let me give you two quick tips. First is, uh, don't get pulled over in the car with this. It just looks bad. <laughs> and secondly, make sure your neighbors know that you make candles and that candles involve different materials because as soon as they start seeing bags and boxes of this white powdery substance showing up in your front doorstep, they're gonna start asking questions. And I say that from experience. It happened to me early on when I first started making candles. Okay, so now let's talk about what it really is and what its purpose is. Um, and for starters, I don't keep it in this plastic bag um, or how it comes ever. I store it in airtight containers. Um, they can be little Tupperware containers. It can be jars with a lid, whatever. Something that makes it easier to, uh, to access and use as you need. It can get a little messy and you can spill it a lot if you try to do it out of the bag. But that's just a, that's just a tip for any new uh, candle makers out there. So... What is the purpose of it? Well, by, by its name, UV inhibitor, uh, it's meant to inhibit the effects of UV rays. So that's typically gonna be sunlight. Um, so if your candles sit in windows or uh, anywhere where natural light is coming in for a prolonged period of time, that can cause your candles to fade. But it doesn't just have to be sunlight. Fluorescent lighting and other types of lighting in retail shops and stores, for example, can also, uh, also have UV rays and that can also discolor uh, your candles. So how much can it discolor your candles? And is it only needed for dyed candles or colored candles? That's the biggest question I always get. So to, to answer that, I'm going to really touch on a couple things here. First off, first is that yes, you will see a more noticeable effect from UV inhibitor when you're, when you use colored wax or you dye your candle wax. And that is because if you have color in your candles, you will start to see that color fade more than others. I notice it particularly a lot with reds and blues. And so, um, and, and that's just my experience. You, you'll see it in all the dyed candles, but over time, as your candles sit on shelves or windowsills or wherever they might be, um, they started getting exposed to UV light, whether it's indoor lighting or natural light. And when that happens over time, that will start call, causing the color to fade a little bit or the wax to fade a little bit. Now, UV inhibitor will slow that process down of fading. It will not eliminate it, it will not prevent it. But what it will do is increase the length of time your candles can go without being affected by fading and the amount in which they fade. So again, why is that important? Well, especially if you're a wholesaler and your candles are sitting anywhere on shelves uh, with indoor retail lighting, uh, they're gonna start fading over time. And so the longer you can keep your candles looking sharp on the shelf, the better for you and the better for your customer, in this case, the, the store. But even for your own, even if you only sell direct to customers, your candles are sitting in your homes, on your shelves, or wherever you're storing them, typically they're gonna be exposed to some light. Now, you have more control of that in your own environment, so you might keep them in closed, uh, dark areas most of the time, or maybe you have LED lighting, which will not cause fading. That's all great, but you never know when your candles might be fine versus when they might be sitting on a shelf exposed to UV light. And so because of that, my answer to the question of when to use UV inhibitor, for me, it's always, I always do it. 
too many of my products go to other shelves where I'm going to lose control of that. And I'm not going to mix and match which candle batches I use UV inhibitor in versus which ones I don't for two reasons. One, that would be impossible to keep track of. Uh, it's not, okay, not impossible, but why? Like it'd be too difficult to manage that and, and to track that. And I don't need to add more workflow processes to my current workflow just to track something like that. And two, I do it for consistency. What do I mean by that? Well, if every one of my wax products has UV inhibitor, all the testing that I do encompasses that fact. All the testing takes in consideration that I have UV inhibitor. So if I decide to not use a UV inhibitor on some candles, well, then my testing results will be off. So I test all products with UV inhibitor and I use UV inhibitor on all my products. And that again is for consistent process and workflow. So those are the big reasons and my encouragement of why you're going to use, why I use UV inhibitor. My biggest advice is either use it or don't. Trying to mix it, as I mentioned before, is really not going to work out too well for you. And it just adds some more complexity and confusion to your processes. So either decide you want to use it or don't. Either one is fine. It is an optional product. You do not need to use UV inhibitor in candle making or wax melts. It's completely optional. But if you are concerned about colors fading over time or your candle wax, even natural wax fading over time, give it a shot. Just remember, if you do, test it first. You want to make sure that it's not going to change any uh, any of your wicking. Now, Fortunately, in my ex extensive testing over the years, I haven't really noticed wicking differences from UV inhibitor. Now, I do talk about in another video, which I will link up at, uh, up at the top of this video, which is all about wicks. And I talk about all the different variables that go into wicking a candle properly and that every little variable can alter the wick. Well, that is still true. UV inhibitor is still a part of the overall recipe, but it is such a small part of the recipe that, at least in my experiences, I haven't really noticed much of a difference in wicking. That being said, you need to still test. So if you currently do not use UV inhibitor and you wouldn't consider adding it, go ahead and make a normal batch of candles. Maybe make a batch of, say, four candles, two with your regular and two with UV inhibitor added, and then burn them together after they've sat for a few days and see if you notice any differences in the wicking. If not, you're good to go. But just as I say with everything, it's all about testing. So anytime you change your products, consider testing, and I'd highly recommend doing so. Another question I get frequently is whether or not to use UV inhibitor with wax melts. Melts are usually not hanging up very long. Maybe they're kept in drawers, that boxes, that kind of stuff. Even customers, when they buy uh, wax melts, they don't sit them out on counters or in windowsills like they do candles that are getting exposed to natural light and indoor light. So is it a big deal if I use UV inhibitor in my wax melts? Well, again, it goes back to what I mentioned previously. I use UV inhibitor in all my wax products, mostly for my workflow and consistency among all my processes. Because wax melts do still get displayed in a store or on a shelf, and there are various ways to do that. You can use wax melt trays. You can use um, stands that have the pegs that you hang them on. You know, wax melts get displayed just like candles do. But it is true that once a customer gets wax melts, they don't generally sit out as much. They're usually kept in drawers or boxes or whatever. But still, you don't want to necessarily risk the colors fading by the time it makes it to your customers. So again, everything I said earlier still applies to wax melts. In fact, it applies to both. If you're going to use UV inhibitor, I would recommend using it on everything. If you're not going to use UV inhibitor, then I wouldn't use it ever. So just kind of make that decision whether it's important for you to use or not. And so I touched on this earlier, and I mentioned that you'll see the biggest effect on colored candles. However, that doesn't mean that uh, color candles, natural colored candles do not fade. So most are waxes when exposed to UV light over time eventually will start to fade. They will, well, fade would be the wrong word. If it's a color, you'll start, it, it'll look like fading. If they're non-colored candles, it'll start to yellow a little bit. And that yellowing sometimes happens from the vanillin content that's in fragrance oils. Other times it's from the UV light. UV inhibitor can also help with that. So even if you don't dye your candles, you might still consider using UV inhibitor for your natural uh, natural wax candles as well, just because UV lights can cause it to fade. Again, I have both colored and non-colored candles, and I use UV inhibitor and everything. So now we've talked about, you know, what it is, why to use it, when to use it, you know, how to incorporate it into your workflow and all of that. But the last thing we haven't really touched on is how much to use. And so the general recommendation for UV inhibitor is, well, if you do it in, in, in terms of weight, which is, you know, how candle making it generally is done, then it's one quarter to one half percent 
of wax weight. But because weighing something so small and used in such finite amounts like this uh, can be difficult when you're making normal or small batches, um, you may consider just using measuring spoons for this. Now again, if you're making large batches, you can weigh this normally and uh, you're going to want to use a quarter percent to a half percent by weight. But what does that translate into measuring spoons? For UV inhibitor, a quarter percent to a half a percent of wax actually translates to a half a teaspoon to a full teaspoon of UV inhibitor. So that is the method I use because unless I'm making large batches where I'm going to use a tank or something like that, but generally speaking, if you're making a normal batch of candles out of a Presto pot or a pouring pitcher, just get yourself a quarter teaspoon or a half a teaspoon. Just get yourself a set of measuring spoons is what I'm getting at. And uh, you can use anywhere between a half a teaspoon and one teaspoon per pound of wax or per 16 ounces of wax. I typically use the lower amount. Um, I use a half a teaspoon per pound, but it's totally fine to use up to a full teaspoon. But I would imagine that there's a slight higher risk of it affecting wicking a little bit more. But again, you just need to test. You're probably fine, but just test to be safe. Uh, but again, I just use the, the, uh, the lower amount of a half a teaspoon per pound. And it works fine for me. My candles do tend to, uh, to, to hold up pretty well. Uh, to lighting. Um, you know, using a little bit more might be beneficial, but so far it's worked out okay for me. And this stuff isn't really cheap. Um, it's kind of expensive for what it is and the amount that you have to use. And so if I'm getting good enough results at a half a teaspoon per pound, I'm going to stick with that. But again, you can use anywhere between a half a teaspoon and a full teaspoon per pound. So when should you add UV inhibitor to your wax? Well, you want to add it when it's hot. Uh, just like most materials, when it's added to your wax, you want to do it at its temperature or has a, a chance to blend and bind into the wax. And so if you normally melt your wax to say 190 degrees, for example, you're going to want to add this probably first. And what, so my process is this to, to kind of explain this. And you'll see this in a lot of my videos. I measure my wax out. The first thing I do is add UV inhibitor and Vibar if I'm using Vibar. But I use the, I add those products first because they need to they need the hottest temperature in order to mix. So you really want to add this between 180 and 185. If you are one of those candle makers that's never heating your wax up to that point, UV inhibitor might not be for you. It really needs to be hot enough wax in order to mix it in. So between 180 and 185 is totally fine. Basically, anything over 180 is when you want to add this to your wax. But anyways, my process after doing that is then I go ahead and add my, my liquid dye as well, assuming the temperature hasn't dropped too quickly where I need to add my fragrance oil in. So uh, I add UV inhibitor and Vibar, then I add my liquid dye, and then I add my fragrance oil last. Every one of those is added r around 180 or so. It doesn't take long to add UV inhibitor or, or, or uh, Vibar or dye or anything like that. So um, I usually start adding things around 185 to 190. By the time it's around around 180 is when I add in my fragrance oil. Next thing you know, the temperature starts dropping pretty quick at that point. I stir and I'm pouring. Depends on what wax I'm using, uh, what my pour temp is, but uh, that's my general process. So anyways, I probably went into too many details there. You can see a lot of that in my, uh, my other videos on the channel. But when it comes to UV inhibitor, which is the topic of this video, and try to keep from going on another tangent, add this at about 180 to 185 degrees. Last thing I want to mention is what UV inhibitor is not meant for. You'll see some people uh, complaining that UV inhibitor is not stopping the frosting from happening in the candles. And you'll see these left on reviews of candle making supplier sites. You'll see them on forums. You'll see them in Facebook groups. UV inhibitor is nothing to do with frosting. It's not going to prevent frosting. Frosting is caused by the fats that are in soy waxes and it has nothing to do with UV rays. So adding UV inhibitor isn't going to prevent frosting at all. Um, so just wanted to mention that in case you are expecting it to do so. And if you are seeing bad reviews about UV inhibitor, uh, that it doesn't prevent frosting, I don't want that to discourage you from buying UV inhibitor because it's not meant to stop frosting. It's purely about the fading and discoloring of candle wax due to UV light. So I hope, hopefully this video was somewhat helpful for you. I know that some of you are already familiar with UV inhibitor, but maybe some of this information was new to you and helpful. But for everyone else that is new to candle making, that's UV inhibitor. That's what it looks like. That's what it's for. That's how to use it. Hopefully these details in this video helped you out. If you have any questions or further comments or feedback about UV inhibitor or anything in general, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And as always, any other questions or topics for conversation in future videos, also mention those in the video uh, in the comments below, and I'll use those as material for Q&A videos coming up as well. 
So thank you all for being here and we'll see you next time. Thanks.